All right, guys, thank you for watching again. Uh, this is going to be 10B here. I'm going to go ahead and delve into some later events in uh, Joe's life here. So, um, like I said, in 2006, my nephew was born. He had factor 9 hemophilia. So, of course, there's a stuff we had to watch out with with him. And um, I can't, couldn't really go into the details about what happened uh, later. But um, right around when my nephew turned about a year old, I want to say this was in... May, June 2007, um, Joe and Laura ended up getting into, they started having problems with their marriage. A lot of it was because, um, a lot of it was, was stemming from the fact they lived with, uh, Laura's mom in uh, the basement of her house and, um, the fact that Joe wanted everyone to, wanted them to have their own house. So there was a lot of, a uh, internal conflict with, uh, Laura's mom and them and stuff between Laura and Joe. I don't know the details of what happened exactly, but they did end up separating. And, uh, Joe moved back in with me and mom and Josh. Dad had passed away that, by that point, but I'll go ahead and get to that in a later video. So Joe, he moved in with us. He slept on the couch, lived out of his car pretty much because he had all his shirts and stuff in his car. And, um, he was working at Accurate Screen Printing with, uh, Grandma and my aunts and uncles at this point. Grandpa had just passed away the year before. I'll get into that in a later video as well. So he was, he was working there as a graphic designer on, on the computers. He used that to get by, but, um, he, he did try over and over to try to make up with Laura and see if there's anything they could do to, to salvage the marriage. And, um... That summer, at the end of that summer, 2007, it was the end of, end of August, um, me and Joe and, and my little brother, we ended up uh, all going out to a, a Weird Al concert together. This is finally my very first concert. Went over to um, what's Fiddler's Green now, and over to the, the Weird Al concert. He sang, Weird Al sang White and Nerdy. He sang all, all his classic songs there, and me and Joe and my little brother, we all had a grand old time, and... Um, on the way out, we spied these uh, souvenir hoodies, and um, Joe made a comment about wanting to buy one for uh, my niece, but he he didn't. I think we, I think he might have actually said that on the way in, but on the way out, he actually didn't didn't stop to buy one. So I don't know if he if it just slipped his mind or not. But um, the way the parking situation was at Fiddler's Green, uh, we we got completely lost because I think we'd parked several blocks away from the place. So we went around in like ten different directions trying to find his car again. But eventually, we did find his car. And, and while we were wandering around looking for his car, we did start, all three of us, we did start just talking about just random stuff, just because it had been a long time since the three of us had really hung out together as siblings. And um, at that point, Nana's Con was a few weeks away, and um, um, I told Joe what I was going to go ahead and dress as that year. I said I was going to go ahead and dress as Mika Ito from Bible Black. I'll go ahead and let you Google Bible Black for yourself, and uh, then you'll ex you'll see why Joe laughed hard at what I what I had said and uh my little brother he knew what Bible Black was as well so he just kind of face palmed like this just groaned but um I, t I took good joy in seeing Joe and my little brother's reaction to that so yeah we did eventually find Joe's car again we drove home I still actually still have the ticket stubs from from that evening because I was probably the last time all three of us really uh, hung out together and then a couple weeks later um I guess Joe started getting depressed and uh, my uncle Robbie he tried he tried talking with Joe about this saying you're not leaving here until you tell me what's wrong and um also that that last week uh Joe had talked with Laura on the phone and tried once again to try to reconcile with her and um she said no there's no way they're gonna be able to reconcile so he just said goodbye Laura and hung up and so after that Laura got kind of worried that Joe was going to do something, but at that time, I had no inkling of what was going on. I had no idea at all. I remember that next day, Thursday night, me and Mom went out grocery shopping, and Mom was whining about how uh, Joe would always eat all the Lay's potato chips and not pay her back, because it seemed like whenever we bought potato chips, he'd always wolf down the bag in one sitting, practically, so she, she, was, so she was annoyed with him. And, um... <clears throat> I honestly could not tell you the last time I saw Joe because he was he was working all the time and of course hanging out with his friends outside of work. I I, don't, I honestly couldn't tell you what the when the last time I saw him was, but I do remember um, Friday morning the next day. Um, I was I, I remember laying in bed, and uh, it was about seven in the morning. I heard the phone ring upstairs. 
I heard mom answer the phone. Then I suddenly, and even though she was all the way upstairs, I suddenly heard her burst into tears. And then I heard the car drive off. So I thought something must have happened, clearly. So I couldn't sleep anymore. So, of course, I got up, went to the bedroom that used to be Joe and Laura's, was now Josh's bedroom, my, my brother. I went in and banged on the door, told him, get up. And um, I never heard anything from mom. She didn't call the house or anything. So it was just me and Josh sitting there. At home, pretty much just wondering what happened. I mean, we, we both kind of figured that something must have happened with Joe because I just had that feeling. So while we're sitting there waiting for news on what the heck was going on, we um, we sat and watched a movie on t on uh, Comcast In Demand. Um, oh, God, which movie was it? It was the one with the Sharice Theron as being a superhero. I forget the name of it. But um, we watched that movie, and um, when I get stressed out sometimes, I uh, I start cleaning. So I started cleaning the kitchen, and so by the time I got done with cleaning the kitchen, it was perfectly spotless. And then I, I took a shower because, like I said, NDK was going to start um, that weekend. So I was still I still had the idea that I was going to be going to NDK that weekend. So I got so I took my shower, packed up my costumes and stuff, and finally in the middle of the afternoon, um, I see Mom's car pull up in the driveway. And then several other relatives' cars pulled up right behind her. I, I, I looked at the door, and, th and I said to myself, I said out loud, whoa, this isn't good. And so uh, mom and the other relatives, they came into the house. Mom gave me this look, and I already knew what she was going to say before she said it. And she said, and then she, she actually did say it. She said, Joey killed himself. And she's trying to hold it, hold it together, clearly. She said, Joey killed himself. They found him at the shop. Uh, Grandma Donna found him. Uncle Robbie found him. And, um, I, I managed to keep a straight face the whole time, but inside my heart is just shattering into a million pieces here. And I, I, somehow I had the wherewithal to ask her how he did it, how he did it. And she said he, he hanged himself. And so, um, a little while after that, um, my then boyfriend Justin, he he showed up, and I told him, I I pulled him aside, told him what was going on, and he said that mom had already called him, told him to come up and uh, take care of me. So um, so even though yeah, even though it was the first day of NDK, and even though I, even after after getting this horrible news, I still. Everything for NDK had already been paid for. We'd already paid for the tickets and the hotel room, everything. So I, so I just wanted to just get away from everything, just to have one moment of normalcy. So me and Justin, we still ended up going to NDK. We actually stopped by um, Arapahoe Community College on the way over there because Joe had been at, had been taking classes there. He was actually due to graduate that semester. I stopped by there, gave um, the people at the front desk the news so they could go ahead and tell his teachers. And then we went to NDK. I dressed as Ito from Bible Black, and I honestly, um, I can honestly say that even though I went there to get away for the weekend just to just to have my moment of normalcy, I really didn't have that much fun that weekend. I don't even remember that much at all about that weekend. I remember laying on the bed a lot, just zoning out a lot. I, mean, I remember trying to have fun in spite of it all. And it didn't work. Um, the moment after NDK ended and I got home, the very first thing I did was go downstairs to my room and cry. And then uh, the next day, me and everybody, we all went over to uh, Laura's mom's house where everyone had still lived. We went over there to start making a few uh, funeral arrangements. And um, Aaliyah, my niece, she kind of knew something about funerals. And um. She asked if there's going to be songs played at the funeral, and Laura told her yes, and uh, Aaliyah had a request of a song that she wanted to have played. She, In Joe's memory, she wanted to have a Weird Al song, Jurassic Park, get played. And so I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, needless to say, that song did not get played at the funeral. Um, what actually ended up happening at the funeral was, um, well... The day of the funeral is actually a, kind of a hard day to remember, because I really... Don't like, don't want to remember remember that day at all. Um, me and Justin and my little brother, we all drove up to the church ourselves, and then we went into the, the visitation room where where Joe was. And there he was. He was dressed in a in a sweater, a, a, a turtleneck sweater, to hide the 
indentations from him hanging. And um, Mom had put several pictures of him as a kid uh, up next by, by, by the coffin lid. And um, I, I, I took one look at him, and I could really feel my heart just break in two right there. And I turned around, and I I hugged uh, Justin. I, I, it was either Justin or Aunt Karen. I can't remember anymore. But um, I hugged one of them, and I said, he, I cried just, I just cried out, he's an idiot, he's an idiot. Just banging on their back, he's an idiot. And I sat, sat there... To sit in there with him for a while, and um, well, his big thing about when he when he went to college was that he wanted to he eventually wanted to be, become part of the UN and eventually become uh what you could say uh, in, in in his own words president of the world. He was one of those people who wanted to eliminate all borders so nobody would be able to say any one spot was there. He was he was. He was big into the whole one world unity thing, and he was actually studying Arabic at college at the time of his death. And so, um, when I'm sitting there visiting him in his casket, I told him, This wasn't supposed to happen yet, Joe. You're supposed to be president of the world, Joe. What happened there? This wasn't supposed to happen for another 70 years, Joe. And so, I'm just sitting there crying. And, um, Mom finally, before before the funeral started, Mom wanted a moment alone with him, and so I kissed Joe on the forehead, and I told him I loved him, and then I walked out the door to go away in the, into the main part of the church to, to wait for the funeral to start, and then um, they brought in Joe's casket. It was, it was, it was a closed casket, and um, they ended up playing this as a slideshow with a lot of uh, pictures of Joe over the years, and... Um, they say funerals are for the living because um, one of the moms, one of the songs mom chose for the slideshow was one that Joe absolutely hated. He hated Nickelback, but um, one of the songs that mom chose for the slideshow was a Nickelback song called a uh, photograph. I'll I'll let you look that one up as well. And um, like I said before, he was big into the Beatles, so the other song that played during the slideshow was a uh, John Lennon's Imagine. And so there's a slideshow, and then um, one lady who had been a neighbor of Joe's when he was living at a Laura's mom's house. She told this story about Joe and his friend Brian. Not the Brian from the Trishko Mafia, a different Brian. He's she's telling stories about them helping her out and um she said, Oh yeah, and Aaliyah told me to tell you all that um that Joe was the best daddy in the world and then I I could hear Aaliyah yell from the crowd, He was Well he was and then everyone started <laughs> chuckling a little bit because Because it was it was the truth. Joe was Joe was a wonderful dad and I'm actually crying right now, sorry. Um Joe did end up getting cremated. Um half of his ashes are buried in Littleton Cemetery, which is probably which he would probably think hilarious because um one of our famous local criminals, Alfred Packer, he's buried in Little Littleton Cemetery as well, so I'm sure he'd be find that hilarious, but he's buried in the same place as him. Uh, Laura has the other half of his ashes. I know that she's told me that she's had plans to scatter them in Alaska sometime, but that hasn't happened yet. And, um, there, there's more that I do want to say, but, um, I'm about to cry here, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short for today. Um, I might go ahead and get into some more of it next week if, if I'm up to it, but, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and cut it short for today, guys. Um, I do want to thank you very much for, for hanging out with me that, so far, and, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and see you next week. All right, thank you. Bye.